Glory to God. How good that our arrival here was not in vain. The presence of the Lord can be felt from the moment in which we knelt down through the, through the praises and the glorification. The Lord's presence is, is, was awaiting, waiting for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet the, the church that is present, the ones who watch us online with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to stand up, those who can, in reverence to the word of the Lord, which is on Psalm Psalm 137. Salmos no 137. Nós leremos apenas dois versos. 137. And the Lord told us that he was going to give us awareness of a few spiritual values tonight. You who entered here know that the Lord has prepared a blessing for you, for me, for each one of us who entered here. That's what the service is for. It is a moment for us to come close to the Lord and He calls us to be close to Him. He told John, come up here. When he gathered the children that was probably bothered, uh, apparently was bothering him, he said, let the children come to me because from them is the kingdom of God. We are to tonight together with the Lord to hear about His voice, to learn from Him and grow with Him. Psalm 137, verse 5, 6 says the following. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem, above my chief joy. Lord, we praise you because we can already enjoy of your love, of your power and your mercy. And now as we meditate on your word, we ask to open up our understanding, increase our understanding of the spiritual things. <coughs> Teach us to give worth to your work, to your project, your salvation. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. The church may be seated. In the last days, the last few days, we have heard a lot inside the parable of the Great Supper. We have heard about instrumentality. We have heard about obedience. We have heard about the excuses. There are countless. We could even use here and now this expression which is an expression very valid for a moment of gathering in the presence of the Lord. We who entered here, each, any one of us could have very well have enjoyed a free will and have told to ourselves, I'm not going to go to the house of the Lord tonight, I'm tired, I'm sick. The Lord knows all things. And surely the Lord knows all things. But in the moment in which we become aware of our own means, and many times our flesh spoke louder, was our ego was our laziness, and we fight against this, and we will overcome this, we are more than victorious. Because when we come into the presence of the Lord, we know that in His presence, there is the refreshing. There is a comfort, there is a consolation, there is the strengthening, there is no service in which we do not enter with open heart, that we may not leave delivered, happy, strengthened in the presence of the Lord. Let's be the Lord for this. And the brethren know what it all means, this desire to be in the presence of the Lord, Even when you are tired, even where, when we are discouraged, sometimes saddened, to say, I'm going, because I'm not going to please no man. I'm going not to go to attend to a social gathering, not because of an obligation, but I'm going because I'm going to meet with the King of Glory. When we do this, we are giving worth to something that could never be go unnoticed in our lives, which is Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, 
has always been, a, it will always be a target of a love, of a, a special attention from God. Even if we brought it to um, the human field, social, economical, political, the whole world uh, desire Israel, the whole world fights to be able to have power, even if it is part of, of or a little bit of authority, or if they do this with that Israel, this small Israel, which is the capital, which is, humanly speaking, something so simple. For us, it's filled with history and revelation and prophetic meanings, but it is just a city, so small. If, if for the world that do not know the secret revealed in Jerusalem, if it is special for them, much more it should be for us. We who know that it is the representation of the holy city, the dwelling of the have, heavenly God, the place that we are going to, the place that is being prepared for you and I, it cannot be, uh, cannot go unnoticed. And that's exactly the text that we just read that says, the servants that have been captive, Israel, has disobeyed, turned uh, back to the Lord, and there was the siege of the city, there was the captivity, there was the kidnapping, and now they were in foreign land. They were on foreign land, they were in ba Babylon, a place that was not their own environment, a place where they never desired to be. And then the beginning of the text speaks of, of uh, provocation. And they were sitting down, humiliated, saddened. They cried beside the river and remembered the city that they loved, Zion. Zion represents blessing. Here, 2195 North Andrews is Zion. We arrived here, and here is Zion. Why? Because here the Lord orders blessing in life, and He ordered for you and I blessings in life at this moment. It's a special moment for you and I, for our lives and our families. And they were crying there, and they hung hung up their, their instruments, and the, the ones who have been kidnapped, they asked, sing something for us. Sing a song that speaks about your land so that it might bring joy to us, and they would answer, "How, how can I, can we rejoice? How can we sing a song of the Lord in foreign land?" My brethren, verse five seven says the following: If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its kill. The right hand has this mean, spiritual meaning that is prophetic. It speaks of about work. It speaks about availability. It speaks of, about willingness. It speaks about when the Lord calls you, you answer, here am I. And not with excuses like the ones given in the parable of the Great Supper. The parable of the Great Supper, the right hand had no skill. It's such a, an, an amazing sub feast and the excuses were many. We heard last Sunday explained in a very detailed way, in an amazing way, and the excuses are many. And the servants here, they were leaving their, their moment of trial and also, why not say, moment of spiritual mourning because there, <coughs> there was represented a death of a desire of a walk and they then take a stand and until verse 4 is just complain and murmuring and questioning, and they questioned. And in fact, if, if they had they understand that begins in verse 5, they could have very well been a blessing, even in foreign land, because that, that's what we are. <coughs> we live in a world that is being represented by Babylon. We are in foreign land. Here is not, it is not our land. We are here passing by. We are being kidnapped by sin, the original sin. 
in the world, regarding to the world, we are in foreign land. But knowing the God that we know, grabbing onto the power of Jesus, now we are delivered. Now we are simply waiting for the moment of our deliverance. With the sound of the last trumpet, for us the fourth, we will be able to depart and live with the Lord. We will be free from this slavery. So now verse 5 begins to come the fear of the Lord. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. And at this moment they admit that there is in them some ability. A call that they have been called for was still standing. There was uh, skill. But if they forgot about Jerusalem, so that this skill may have been forgotten. And we can al analyze from the biological point of view. When my right hand is uh, skilled and know its movement, how will it forget? And biologically speaking, is when there is something wrong with your brain, when there is some sort of infirmity, in which the brain, which is the command of all things, is affected by an accident, whether it is a mechanical accident or, or a physiological accident, there was an, a damage in the connections, neurological connections, and now I want to move my hand, I, my hand does not move, and who is the head, who is the brain? It's Jesus. We are the body, the church is the body, and the head is the Lord Jesus, and while we still have Lord Jesus as our leader, our chief, our master, the commander of the heavenly uh, armies, if we have this responsibility, this fear, this respect for him, when he gives us an order, our right hand will exact its skill in blessed be the name of the Lord, because he has given us the blessing of being a healthy church, the body of Christ, for the experience that we have lived, locally speaking, how many have come close to us, how many have made that definition on the Lord, how many at the end of the service may have said, I, the Lord was in the service, I felt the presence of the Lord. In the service of vi the vigil service, I heard an expression I'm going to relate to the brethren. I, I would like the brethren to take on to themselves no glory, no merit, because the Bible says that only the Lord is worthy of all the honor and praise. One of the people that visited, visited us uh, after the service, they said, when we asked, did you feel okay in the service? Oh, we always ask because we want to give to the Lord our best. One day we have been received with joy and we want the ones who visit us to be received in the same way. And that man said, he said that he was going to use a word and he said, the word I'm going to use is excellence. In the service I noticed an excellence from beginning to end. And we we do not rejoice, but we glorify the Lord, the Lord, because this, we don't boast, but this excellence belongs to the Lord, and He lent this excellence to us individually. He gave this excellence to the instrumentalists, the praise group, and to the children that sing, the women that also sing, the, the youth that is sang songs, and the vigil of the New Year's. And this excellence that was given to the brand that was that were at the door and to ones to the ones that even were not able to enter. Them. I know that there were a few that watched the service from outside. Blessed be the name of the Lord for His glory. We had here almost 200 people, my brethren, being able to hear the word of God, being able to understand the worth that Jerusalem has, being able to understand what Jerusalem is. In verse six. It goes a little deeper, this sensibility, the instrumentality. Because the text said before, if I do not, if let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth, in my mouth, if I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. The tongue is mentioned in the word of the Lord as an organ of great power. It's like uh, the turn, the turn of the ship. If you if you don't, uh, no, are not able to control the turn of the ship, if, if you don't know how to control the turn, you end up going to the wrong direction because it was a uh, lack of control of the turn. And the tongue is the same way. 
with the time we the Lord says that we have a power and authority given by God to bless or to curse and tonight the Holy Spirit wants you and I to understand that from the moment in which we have been called for this work of the Holy Spirit we only have an option to bless whatever we might be at work at school and, 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 and the and the traffic and the traffic is a great trial for us the word of the Lord needs to be in our mouth every every day uh, we also need to teach our children we need to be pay attention to this because sometimes we say things that displease the Holy Spirit we curse and the Lord doesn't want this for us he doesn't have this for us but uh, it is the opposite. God has placed us to be salt of the earth, to make a difference. And when the servant in the psalm says, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth, he is showing uh, uh, an inertia of the, the tongue, of the ability to experience um, the feel, the taste. The taste buds is, the abil is an ability. If you taste food and the food has no salt is the sensitivity of the tongue that was placed on the tongue to discern if the, that food was well seasoned or not. And that's what the Lord said, be salt of the earth because salt caused thirst. When you put salt on, on the mouth, it causes you to be thirsty. If we are the salt that the Lord Jesus told us to be, whatever we may pass by, people want, we are going to want to follow us. They want to know where your joy comes from, where the style of life that you have comes from. And we'll, we'll be able to say, the, the way of life that I have is the life of Jerusalem. So if I forget Jerusalem, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. And, and when Israel was sieged and Jerusalem was sieged, it was sieged and the Lord allowed this judgment to come upon them because they had lost the taste for the Lord Almighty. They had forgotten that God was the beloved Father, the one that called Jacob as my beloved, my chosen one. In a, such a lovely way, they had forgotten they had lost the ability to taste and of enjoying the cares of the Lord. They have forgotten of the column of fire during the night and the cloud in the morning. And they forgot about the open Red Sea. They forgot about the birds and the manna. And the parents that, that were supposed to relate to their children, they forgot about the, about the lamb, the blood on the doorpost and all the miracles that the Lord had made. At that moment there on the, the siege, was a moment in which this taste uh, went out of their mouth. But now we know that if we are still clinging to the Lord, if we love the Lord, if we want to go to Jerusalem, the Lord is the one that can restore in us this taste again. Being the ability to uh, give proper worth. My brethren, gratitude, humanly speaking, is the most beautiful thing that exists. The world, the psychiatrists, they all teach that the person that is thankful is healthier, is happier, the person is more successful. Now bring it to the field of Jerusalem. Bring it into Jerusalem. Bring gratitude into the eternal. Bring it, 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 gratitude into a God that never fails. The God, a God that takes care of us with incredible details. They are experiences that small experience sometimes, and others that are very gra great. But we need to pay attention to each one of them and give proper worth to them. Why? Because it is a learning experience so that when we come into Jerusalem that is being prepared for us, we may give proper worth to the, the streets of gold, the, the crystals, and the door opens. And we may give uh, proper worth to uh, the face of the Lord when we see Him face to face. To face. And may we not have uh, laziness in our lives. The Lord has shown that in a vision that were, there were three, so, three soldiers that were valiant soldiers that were on the trenches, but they felt scared. They did not leave the trench. And my brethren, in a war, if we are in a war, there's no way to go back or to come up with excuses. If we are in a war, we need to position ourselves as valiant soldiers of the Lord. We need to use those expressions. If I forget you, Lord, 
If I forget Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. We cannot be in a war without being in a, taking a stand of us as a soldier. In the vision, there are men that have been enlisted. They were in the trench, but they did not get up. They did not move. They, they did not work. They were in a position to defend the the, the location, and there was it was seen that there a valiant man. It was coming back from the battle, only to bring the news that the battle is uh, almost completely won. We are coming close to the end. We have been called to this work of the Holy Spirit. We have been called to be victorious. We have been called by the Lord. We have been called to have a style of life that you never imagined to have. And we rejoiced when you came, but the days passed by, the tribes were many, many shots, many grenades, many explosions, many attacks, many reactions, and you may have grown uh, accustomed to the situation, and you, you may have thought in your heart, I'm, I'm afraid, and you know that fear does not belong to the Lord. The word says that the Lord did not give us spirit of fear, so in this case, the Lord didn't give the spirit of, of uh, God gave us the spirit of boldness and life. Jesus is the spirit that allows us to live, that allows us to uh, des give the desire to fight. We cannot go back. We are already in the battle. It's a battle between life and death. And, but you are with the owner of life. The owner of death has no, has no power upon you. You went here tonight. You feel like you are identified with this gift, with this sign of the Holy Spirit. If the enemy of the soul is scaring you, is causing you to be frightened, take possession of what the Lord is doing tonight. The bold one, the valiant of Israel, is saying, we are almost at the end of the battle. Soon Jesus will return to take us. Maranatha will be fulfilled and we will enter into glory with Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus.
I invite the church to stand up. Os instrumentos are going to be playing. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord of hosts. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glorify the Lord. Because the Lord has called you for this project. He enlisted you. He's a commander of their heavenly armies. And his order, according to his orders, the angels go and come and bring victories and bring and deliver answers to everything that needs to be done. Bless be the name of the Lord. The word that the Lord speaks about the destry and that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And so when the servant said, if I forget you, Jerusalem, may you, may I my right hand forget its skill we cannot forget Jesus Jesus is to be in our minds and our hearts every moment through his Holy Spirit when we plead for the blood of Jesus when we are in a situation of danger and we seek him and he comes and help us when we we were raptured in the future when there comes a moment for the Lord to judge the nations the Bible says that whoever wins will be have the right to sit with the Father to judge the nations as the tongue is not clinging to the roof of the mouth. As the mouth has been washed and redeemed, it's now we're going to have authority to judge the nations. This is the gift of the Lord. Glorify the Lord because those are benefits of salvation. Those are gifts from this wonderful God, the one who served with joy, the ones who whom will let go uh, of many things in order to be with uh, until the end so that we may be able to achieve those victories. Let's be the Lord. Let us repeat this part of the song, the last part of the song. How beautiful is the pro this project? How beautiful is this problem? The Lord provided for We're going to have yet another word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise your name. Because it's good to serve you, Lord. It's good to come up at your house. To feel the care of the Lord. The refreshing in our soul. Lord, we, we praise you, Lord. Because one day, we'll be with you face to face. We praise your name. Because it's good to know that in the last day we will be able to be in an eternal Jerusalem. Blessed be your name, Lord. Because this day is coming soon. We praise you, Lord. You give you glory and hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Another servant also can glorify. I want to praise your name. For this eternal project, this perfect project. Lord, we don't deserve anything. But we want to exalt you, Lord. Fill our hearts, Lord. Because you're God of Israel Almighty. We have not allowed us our feet to be to falter, Lord. We protect us from the things of this world. <coughs> our eyes have not seen, but our hearts have felt, Lord, that your 
arrival is coming soon. And we will see you face to face, Lord. We'll let go, uh, we'll let this world we exalt in the name of Jesus. Receive, Lord, the gratitude of your church. Our joy is to be with you, Lord. Jerusalem is our greatest joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you for this spiritual gift that the Spirit is saying that is soon the moment of taking possession of our greatest victory to be with the Lord in eternity. Receive, Lord, the gratitude of our heart. We thank you for the healings that were ministered in service. We praise you for the deliverances. We praise you even for salvation. We praise you and take us home in peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. We are at the disposal of whoever may need a prayer, a word. And our next service is going to be on Thursday at five at eight o'clock PM. Peace of the Lord.